It will never be the same. The old truck bumped along the dusty road. Tracy sat between her twin brother Mike and their uncle George. If she hadn't had a seatbelt, she was sure she'd be flying. The July day was hot. The truck windows were closed to keep the dust outside, but it kept all the air out too. Tracy and Mike had been sent out to the Queen Charlotte's Islands in British Columbia to stay with Uncle George and Aunt Julie for a month. Uncle George and Aunt Julie were welcoming and full of stories of their mom as a child. Last night, Uncle George told them that they were going on a picnic. Usually, he asked Tracy or Mike what they would like to do. This time, no information. No explanations were given, just, we're going on a picnic. They'd helped Aunt Julie pack a lunch. The truck headed north on the coastal highway to a secondary road that turned inland into the forest. As they hit a particularly big bump, Tracy looked at her brother. He raised his eyebrows and made a face. She grinned. Suddenly, Uncle George braked and turned into an opening in the forest. He stopped the truck, opened the door, and suggested quietly that they get out. Dismount, was how he expressed it. It was a small clearing. The trees surrounding them were huge, with trunks reaching almost cloud high before the foliage began. Mike asked if these were Douglas firs. Uncle George nodded. Stroking the bark of one, he quietly said, Douglas fir can grow 100 meters tall, with diameters of 5 meters or more. They can live 1,200 years. So, some of these trees were old when the Vikings visited the East Coast. They headed into the forest. Tracy leaned over to smell a small blossom on a bush. Is this dogwood? Tracy asked. Yes, Tracy, one of the many varieties. As they walked on, the sun streamed like yellow waterfalls through the trees to splash the path. In spots, the path looked like Dorothy's yellow brick road. Huddled around the broad trunks were bushes. Beneath those, flowers and grasses pushed through last year's leaves and needles. Tracy was awed. There was majesty to the forest. The immensity of everything was not oppressive. She felt at peace. Mike must have felt the same, for he stopped and looked slowly around him. Uncle George broke the silence. There's a fallen log up ahead. We'll stop there. Neither Tracy nor Mike replied. They followed their uncle. They passed a small pond where the croak of frogs and the chirping of the songbirds filled the air. Within five minutes, they came to a stream. A log that seemed planted on the shore beckoned them. Uncle George dropped his backpack, sat on the ground, and leaned against the log. Tracy sat a little way down from him. Mike went to the creek and tested the water with his hand. It's cold, he said, in a voice that seemed too loud. Yes, Uncle George replied quietly. The water comes from the melting snow in the mountains. It's cold. His voice was calm and slow, in keeping with the peace. Why did you bring us here, Uncle George? Tracy asked. Before Uncle George could answer, a large bird glided along the creek and climbed quickly beyond the treetops. Tracy pointed and asked, What is that, Uncle George? The questions started Uncle George talking. He told them about the trees in this temperate rainforest. He told about the yellow cedar, which can live for 800 years. He showed them the egg-shaped, dark green leaves of the arbutus. It is a broad-leaved evergreen unique to the coastal area. They saw Gary Oak and some hemlocks and Sitka spruce. As they moved around the clearing, Uncle George showed them signs of deer and fox. He talked of bear and moose. They saw evidence in the undergrowth of weasels, shrews, mice, and moles. He told them stories of the forest. He told of camping and fishing with their mother. Tracy and Mike could hear the birds, the stream, and the buzzing insects. They smelled decaying leaves. Uncle George talked of the chickadee, the nuthatch, and the jay. His stories had Tracy and Mike soaring with the eagles and hunting at night with the owls. They began to know the forest. While they were eating lunch, they heard a goose, and Uncle George spoke of the swans, gulls, and terns. 
After a lengthy pause, while they devoured Aunt Julie's chicken sandwiches and salad, Mike spoke. You've told us about trees and shrubs, about animals and birds, but there are many species you haven't mentioned. Yes, Mike, said Uncle George. What did I miss? Bugs, in the air, on the log, and on the ground. We passed a pond on our way here, and I heard frogs, and I bet there are snakes. He paused. Tracy continued. How about fish? And probably there are crabs in the water. There are many plants, flowers, mosses, lichen, algae. Her voice trailed off. And all of these things are interdependent, added Mike. Each species feeds within the forest and lives and dies. The plants grow and die here too. Tracy was suddenly quiet. Is it just here for us to use? Or are we part of it, Uncle George? Where do we fit in? Uncle George threw the question back at her. Not an easy question to answer, Tracy. How do you think we fit in? We know how you feel, Uncle George, Mike added. You love the forest. You know the land. I think you feel you're a part of it. It's in your voice and in the way you walk around. Uncle George replied, I feel a reverence for the land and a responsibility to it. How about you? What do you think? Mike spoke slowly, as if he was thinking out loud. I don't know what I believe. It's all too sudden and too strange. Can we come back again? I want to know the land better. I want to feel the trees. I want to search for animals and birds and observe them. Can we do that? No, Mike, we can't. I wish we could. We came today because the loggers will be here on Monday and this land will be off limits to us. The loggers? Oh no! I've heard of clear cutting. The animals, homes, and food supply will be destroyed and the plants will be uprooted. The birds will have nowhere to nest. Tracy's voice broke. I'll never use wood again. Tracy, Uncle George said quietly, think of all the wood we need. The company will be using a new forest management method that leaves some vegetation and encourages new growth. But it won't be the same, Tracy almost wailed. No, it won't ever be the same. They'll need an airstrip, a pier, and a large clearing for their equipment. Forests evolve and change naturally without logging, but it's different. Lots to think about. Let's get home. Your Aunt Julie will be expecting us.